We'll begin the service today and singing number 68. I'll mention in the beginning of the service today 
that we will have our monthly meeting here tomorrow night, our vocational meeting at 8 o'clock, and you're all welcome to come and be with us. You're all welcome out today. I know that the Lord welcomes any and everybody to his church to hear his message so that we all can have what he died for, eternal life. He came here to the earth and he lived. He died and he was resurrected back to life and he will come again. And what a wonderful day that that will be to the righteous when he comes again. He has fulfilled three of those four things, those events that I just mentioned. His living here, his death, and his resurrection. And now we need to be looking forward to his return here upon the earth. Because when he returns, then we can all be redeemed into our eternal life into that life with our Lord and Savior, and then at some point, there with God the Father, to ever be with them, to never be in a condition again as we are today, in a condition to be tempted by Satan, and in a condition, we're here today though, that each and every one of us that want to can have power over Satan through the Spirit, of God that's available to all of those that ask. He says, ask, and you shall receive, as reading that, I believe, this morning. Seek, and you shall find, and knock, and it shall be opened to you. And these were words of our Lord that he is offering to all of us. And there is none of us, not anyone, that will escape standing before him. But it's a great and an honorable privilege also that we have to be able to stand before him and to be able to use the blood that he shed there on Calvary to cleanse our sins, to wash our sins and make us white as snow with the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. The love that the Father has for all of us that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, here. And we go over these things over and over and over. But we, do we truly understand what he did for us? He paid the price for your eternal salvation. Jesus Christ paid the price for it. And it is done. He says it is finished as he was there on the cross, hanging writhing in pain and anguish and crying out to his father why hast thou forsaken me he was tried and tempted in every way that he could possibly be tried and tempted to try him to blaspheme the word but he never did he held out until the end and then he said it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. And the veil in the temple was rent from the top to the bottom, I believe it says. That old law, that law of Moses then was done away. That new law, that law of grace that we are under today, then had been established. And now that is for you and me to be able to accept and to be able to use that we can stand before our Lord and Savior. At that day when he ascends out of heaven, we can rise to meet him to ever be with our Lord. And he says, encourage one another in these, with these words. And are we encouraged in it today, friends? Do we believe it? Have we accepted Christ as our Savior? Have each and every one of us accepted him and given our life to him as not my will, 
but your will be done in me, Lord. Totally in submission to him. That's where we need to be, each and every one of us. And that takes a lot. Self is a mighty big man, the, the saying says. But we've got to relinquish that. And we've got to become as that little child, he says, just as that little babe. That little child that is so dependent upon its parents for everything so that it can survive here upon the earth. We have to become spiritually in the same way. Totally dependent upon our Lord and Savior so that we can survive spiritually. And I know that it's not a hard job if we want to just put it into his hands. There'll be trials and there'll be temptations and there'll be things that we don't understand to begin with. But if we'll just wait upon the Lord, put it into his hands and then wait upon him and do the things that he asked for us to do in our day. As we go through and we read the Bible, we can see all manner of things that the Lord asked people to do so that he could accomplish certain works within them. If they had not done that, then they would the works would have never been done. We can see others that he asked for certain works to be done within them, and they did not do it. And they lost out. Some went back to the house that they came out of. Some turned away and went away from the teachings of our Lord. But we've got an opportunity today to stay right within his kingdom. Stay within the walls of the protection of the Spirit of God through His Son, Jesus Christ. He says, I will be with you, lo, until the end of the world. He says, I'll be with you. And I'll be there for you, is what He's saying, and for me. For all of those that will accept Him and then follow Him. He says, those that hear my words and does them is what he says. And he goes on to tell how that they will have power and that they will be able to stand against Satan. Those that hear my words and does them, he says. And he goes on to tell again too that those that hears his words and does not the things that he says, how that they will not be able to stand. So friends, we have a work to do. And he is there. Keep your eye singled upon his work. If we keep that eye singled, then that whole body will be full of light, that spiritual light that will be able to direct us in everything that we do, whatever it might be. I have opened the Bible this morning to the third chapter of Mark. We'll read there this morning. Some of the Lord's work while he was here, the gospel, the things, the history, so to speak, of what our Lord and Savior did while he was here upon the earth. And it was recorded by four different men, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And they all pretty much coincide. There's some things different in each one of them. And some tell about one item and something somebody else. But it's all good. It's all things that can be wonderful for us to listen to. And wonderful for us to read and know and understand how our Lord would have for us to live in our day. And we'll start reading at the first verse of the third chapter of Mark. And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man which had a withered hand. And they watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he said unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. The Lord knew all about what these people were, were thinking in their mind. He saw this man there that needed help. He knows who needs help spiritually here today. 
He knows who has that withered hand spiritually. And if we come out here today, and I believe this man came there in that day, the man that had the withered hand was there at the synagogue, and I believe that he probably knew something about this man Jesus and what he had done in some cases. But if not, the Lord wanted to see, and he wanted to show, and God had a certain plan in his life there in that day, and he told the man to stand for it. And the man was obedient to it. To what he said even though the Lord knew that there was people there that was in direct opposition to the things that he had been teaching and he said unto them he did first of all he addressed the people that was around him the ones there that in their mind was watching and trying to see what the Lord would do so that they could condemn his work. And he looked around upon them, first told the man to stand forth. I want everybody to see who you are and what the situation is that you have this withered hand that you can't live with or that you can't function as you should. And today there's people here maybe that has that withered hand spiritually that is not able to function spiritually as they should. Listen to the Lord. And is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil, to save life or to kill? The Lord just made that very plain to the people there. And what did they do? But they held their peace. They could not have anything to say against what the Lord had just asked them, what he had told them. He wanted them to see and know that what he was about to do, he says, even under the law of Moses, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or is it lawful to do evil? To save life or to kill? There were certain things that they could do and the Lord just brought these things right out to them. And when he had looked round about upon them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand, and he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. Now I want you to stop and let's think and look here what the Lord did and, and how, he, how the writer there describes the condition that the Lord was in. He saw that. He knew that he had the power of God and he was there and he could heal these people. He could give them knowledge and understanding that they could have eternal life if they would just believe upon him. They did not want to believe upon him. They wanted to condemn him. Do we all, have we all come out here this morning with a mind to believe upon the things that the Lord Jesus has to prevent, pre present to us? And to them follow through and do the things. Not only believe it, not only hear it, but believe it and then follow it through it with our works. And that's what he did here. He believed that God the Father could give him power to heal that man. He understood that. He told these people. He chastised them. And then he looked round about. He saw how they felt. And he looked round about on them with anger. He had anger in their heart because they were in his heart because they would not believe they wanted to put down the word of God. Being grieved for the hardness of their hearts. Grieved. It saddened him. It angered him to see how they would disrespect the word of God. And he was grieved about it for the hardness of their hearts. And I know that that is, he grieves in those things today. When he looks upon mankind here upon the earth and how he has poured out his blood and how he has offered to give that free gift to every man, woman, and boy and girl upon the earth. And people continued to reject him throughout the world. Continued to go away from his teachings and take his word and turn it into a lie so that it can justify their evil ways. And that grieves him. But that did not stop him at all from continuing his good works. 
and it will not stop him today from offering and to giving to all of those that ask, all of those that truly desire his spirit, and that and to, to be able to do the things that he asked to be done, it is there. And just as he went right on there and he said to the man, Stretch forth your hand. Even though these people there were so against him, he just told the man with the withered hand, stretch forth your hand. And he stretched it out. And his hand was restored, whole as the other. He followed what the Lord was asking me to do. The Lord said, do it. And he did. If the man had never rose up when the Lord told him to rise, if the man had not stretched out his hand, these were simple things. The Lord could have just healed him without doing any of that, friends. But he had a work for this man to do. He has something for you. He said, stand, and the man did. He said, stretch out your hand, and he did. And his hand was made whole just as his other. And you can be made spiritually whole today by following his words. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. The Pharisees, here a group of people that were self-righteous, that felt like that they knew more about the law than this man Jesus. And that he was a, a blasphemer. He was not the true Messiah. That is the way they looked upon it. And what did they do? Here in the very early age of his preaching and his teaching, they straightway, it says, took counsel. They got together a group of men and tried to figure out a way that how can we destroy this man? Even went and got other people involved in it. What can we do to destroy Jesus and put this work off? But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea. And a great multitude from Galilee followed him and from Judea. They tried to stop it. Jesus just went away. He took his disciples and they went somewhere else. And what was taking place? A great multitude, he says, followed him. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing to see that today? To see such a great multitude that had a true desire to want to know about Jesus Christ. And come out and follow him. And from Jerusalem, and from Edomea, and from beyond Jordan, and they about Tyre and Sidon, and great multitude, when they heard what great things he did, came unto him. And he spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because the multitude, lest they should throne him. For he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him. As many as had plagues, they all saw the wonderful works that this man had done and he could do. Just the natural part. And they wanted to follow him. But I believe that there was a great number of those also that wanted to follow him for the spiritual parts. And he says, in unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. And he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach. Now I want you to think about this. He ordained twelve, he said. He brought them, he, he chose those twelve men that they might go forth and preach. Teach the wonderful words of God. He gave them the power to be able to do that. Twelve of them. And he to, to and to have power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. 
All of these men, I want you to think about, that he gave them the power to do that. Now, how was he able to do that? That was the Spirit of God that was within him. That he was able to do that, and they received that Spirit of God. They received the power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. Power over Satan. Think about that. Now, this was 12. I want you to remember that. There was 12 of them that had that power. And Simon, he surnamed Peter. And James, the son of Zebedee. And John, the brother of James. And he surnamed them Bernese, which is the sons of thunder. And Andrew. And Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, the son of Alphys, and Thaddeus, and Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him. And they went into a house. Now there was 12 of them there. And he gave them that power. And I believe at that time they all was walking with him. They all had a certain love for him. And they received of that. And they were all able to go out and do that. He didn't say that there was just 11 of them. There was 12. Judas Iscariot betrayed him. Father on down. Went back to the house that he came out of. He betrayed the Son of God. And the, But at this point right here, he had power to do just as the other, tw other 11 apostles had. But he lost out. Why? Because he loved the things of this world more than the things that God had to offer. He loved the things of this world more than serving God through Jesus Christ. Turned out, I believe, that it was money is where he had a great love. It mentions that a time or two about there. I believe there in one place where Mary, I believe it was that she took that very expensive ointment and anointed the Lord's feet. And Judas had a lot to say about it, about that and how that she should, he should have sold that and given it to the poor. Said that was a waste doing upon that and the Lord chastised him about it. But he said that he did that because he had the bag and he loved money. And then later on he went out and he betrayed our Lord for 30 pieces of silver. He thought that would make him happy to be able to have that large sum of money. But it did not. That money really just ruined his life. And he saw the tremendous mistake he had made, but he had already done it. And he went out and he hanged himself. Took his life. Satan just carried him from one thing right on into something else. Took his life. The other apostles, the other disciples, they were able then to go on and do the Lord's work here upon the earth. They made mistakes, but they had a forgiven God, a forgiven Jesus. And if they went to him, and they were repented of these things. God was able to clean them up. And the multitude coming together again. So that they could not so much as eat bread. That great multitude there. Around his friend. Around Jesus and the disciples. They didn't even have time to eat. There were so many people and they were so interested in the work that was going on there. And I believe that they were there, Christ and his men, these 12. I believe that they were there mingling among these people and talking to them and encouraging them in the word of God. A great multitude there. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him and said, for he is beside himself. Some of his friends did not even believe upon the things that he was doing. He said, he's beside himself. 
And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub by the prince of devils, casteth he out devils. All of them wanting to find something wrong with the words of God, something wrong with the truth. Is that in our minds today? Or will we just accept his word? These are the truths of God that he has had laid out for us to be able to read and expound upon. Now will we accept it? Or will we be as some of these other people and try to figure out some way or see something that we can find some little small thing wrong with what the word of the Lord is being spoken to us in? And then try to just cast it all out. That was what was going on with these people. They didn't want to accept him. He said he's got, he has Beelzebub, a devil. And the prince of devils is how he's able to cast out devils. And he called unto them and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? The Lord just wanted to ask them a question. He says, now you say that Satan is what is in my spirit, and that's how I'm able to cast out these devils. He says, how can Satan cast them out? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. And we know that Satan doesn't want that at all. Satan wants to continue on. He doesn't want to cast out and he won't be casting out devils. He wants to continue that and to help to promote that kind of thing. And that's what our Lord and Savior was just bringing these things to their attention. He says he, he is not divided against his own house. If he was, his house would not stand. And we can't be divided against the house of our Lord. It will not stand in us, but it will be great will be the fall of that house in you and me if we are divided with the Lord. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods. And I want us to think about what the Lord was saying there. No man can come into someone who is strong in the spirit of God and spoil his good, except if we allow ourselves to be bound by Satan again, as long as we use that power that he has to offer to us, friends, he can't bind us. He can't overcome us. We are a strong man, and he can't spoil our good spiritually. Now he says, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. How can you keep, keep from being bound spiritually? Using the power of God. Taking it to him. Waiting upon him. When we see these trials and temptations, we see the temptations that Satan has to bring against us. Wait upon the Lord. Put it into his hands. And you will not be bound by Satan. But you'll be bound in the protection of Jesus Christ. And then he cannot spoil your house. Satan has no power over you at that point. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men and blasphemies, wherein soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Now think about that. He says that all sins and things will be forgiven. He says, but that man that blasphemes against the Holy Ghost. Now that is after we have received the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. 
And then we go and we just put that aside and say, I'm going to go back. I don't want to follow that anymore. I am going back into the ways that I came out of before. He says, then you shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. You've had that light within you. And then you go and totally blaspheme against it and go back. He says, hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Friends, don't put yourself in that condition ever. Be strong in the word. Be bound in the work with Jesus Christ. Let him bind you together with that spirit. Then you become one with him. And you can inherit that mansion above. Be, a, be an heir with Jesus Christ. And he told them all of these things. And he says, because they said he hath an unclean spirit. That was why he went over these things. And he told them about that. He warned them about that. Because they were saying that Jesus Christ had the unclean spirit. There came then his brethren and his mother... And standing without, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat about him. And they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. Visualize these things in our mind. That here was Jesus and a great multitude of people there. He might have been some home or some building, wherever. And there was a great multitude there. His mother and his brothers maybe hadn't seen him in a while, but they had heard he's going to be here at this place. So they went there, and when they got there, there was this great multitude, and they couldn't get in to see him. They wanted to see him. His mother wanted to see him, wanted to talk to him. She had a love for him, that natural love. Some of them went in and told him, said, your mother and your brethren or with outside, and they seek to see you. I want you to listen to what his words was, and how that he was so involved in his father's business, and that he had so much love for all of these other people, that that's where his mind was. That's what he was wanting to accomplish. And he answered unto them, saying, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And he looked round about on them which sat about him and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of God, the same as my brother and my sister and my mother. Now, isn't that encouraging to us this morning to see that this man had so much love there for the sinners, for the people that he was teaching and he was preaching to that he was not even interested that much. Sure, I'm sure that he would have liked to have seen his mother and his brothers, but he knew that in a certain time or condition that he would do that. But right then, he wanted everybody to understand that everybody was on an equal basis with him that followed him, that did his father's will, he says. Let's read that again. And he answered them saying, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he looked round about upon them that sat about him and said, Behold my brethren, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do, and listen carefully to that, whosoever shall do the will of God, and what's the will of God? That we all submit to his son. And then we all follow him. We do the things that he asked for us to do. Whosoever shall do the will of God, the same as my brother, my sister, and my mother. Friends. That's what he's saying. They're the ones that I will work with. I will give my love to. I will give them my power and he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was 
gathered together unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and he said unto them in his doctrine, just preaching. And they, he, he did that while he was here. His disciples did that. And he has had people ever since he was here to be able to go throughout the world and to preach his name. And I know that his name is being preached throughout the world today with many, many ways that that is being done. Today, more than ever, because of all the technology and the things that we have, his word is being spread all over the world. And I know that if we will just allow these things to be done in us, that he will work with each and every one of us. And he will give us the same power that he has given just as he gave those 12, he will give it to, the, to us today to use if we want it. We have to want it. We have to ask for it, friends. And now he decided that he's going to tell them some parables. And he's going to tell them about the truth and how that it works. And how that God's power will work. And how that we better be careful about the things that Satan will bring upon us. And he says, hearken. Listen, he says. And I want us all to listen here. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. Visualize that in your mind. He had the man. They had fixed the land. He went out and he sowed. And there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed. Some fell by the wayside. And the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Just think about that. The man taking and sowing the seed. He had the property, there was the land fixed in certain areas, but some of it fell on different places where it was not where it was not fixed. And here the birds just came and grabbed, picked up the seed and ate it. And it did not bring forth any fruit at all. And it came to pass as he sowed, some, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of the earth. And when the sun was up, it was scorched because it had no root. It withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. I'm going to read on through here because our Lord comes back in just a few verses here, and he explains this. And we're going to read on through, but I want us all to listen carefully to one thing. The sower was the same man sowing. It was the condition of the soil and the other things around it that was different in each case. But it was the same sower and the same kind of seed that was sowed. It was good seed in every single instance. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up, and it choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And that is what I want to say here this very morning, that each and every one of us that has spiritual ears to hear, let him hear this parable that he is speaking to us this morning so that we can understand what the Lord has done and what he will do for us and how that we can stay out of trouble spiritually. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. Later on, some didn't understand it. And they went to him and they said, Look, we don't understand about this that you were talking about with the sower. Will you tell us about that? Now that was some of the others and the twelve, he said. 
They were there. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. He says that these are, there are people there that will see these things, that will hear them, but they will not be converted. They will not believe them. They will not understand. He said if they would just listen, if they would pay attention and be submissive to the Lord, they could be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And that's for all of us today that we have that opportunity today. You are here in this fleshly body and we have that opportunity to walk with him. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? He asked them that question, and I believe he kind of maybe chastised them a little bit. Why do you not understand it? And how then will you know all parables? He says, if you don't understand these things, if you aren't listening, how will you understand that? And then he starts to explain it. And let's listen very careful. The sower soweth the word. The sower, the seed, is the spiritual word. The sower was Jesus. The sower today is Jesus. He has given us the words of life. He is sowing that spiritual word, those spiritual words. The sower soweth the word, the same sower, remember, that's Jesus. And he sows that. He has good seed, and he's doing it in every situation. And these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan immediately, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And that's like someone sitting here today hearing the word. The word being preached, Simple, pure, and free. But you allow Satan to just come into your mind and immediately take it away so that it does not do any good for you at all. Immediately he comes and he takes it away. You don't use it to have to give yourself that salvation through Jesus Christ. You don't use the word. You don't take it in. So it does not bring forth any fruit. You allow Satan to immediately put something else in your mind to take that out. There are people that are allowing that to happen today. Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise that was sown on stony ground who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness. Now listen, here's another group. The same sower sowing the same seed, that good seed. The same Jesus Christ spreading the gospel, spreading the truths of God. And he says they hear it. And they receive it with gladness. They receive it, he says, with gladness. They've accepted it. And have no root in themselves. And so endure but for a time. Afterward, when afflictions or persecutions arise for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Have you ever seen that before? Someone get offended in the truth and walk away. They hear the word, they accept it as being the truth. But then, as the truths are being taught to them, maybe things that condemns them, their works, or that Satan comes about and he is out bringing some temptation uh, toward them or some persecution arises because they believe upon Jesus Christ. 
He says that when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, because they believed, immediately they are offended. They didn't, they aren't bound in the spirit with Jesus Christ. They accepted him, but they aren't willing to put it all in. And they're offended. And they don't bring forth any fruit. Doesn't bring forth any fruit at all. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. They hear the word. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things enter in. And choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Hear the word, and accept it, I believe. But then, the cares, he says, the thing, the cares of this world, and friends, I believe that that is one of the most dangerous things that, we, that faces any one of us, <laughs> is the cares and the lust of the things of this world. Instead of keeping our eyes singled, and keeping it on things above that we decide that we have a great care of things of this world and the lust of the things of this world and the things that we go after more than would be necessary in some cases. He says, in the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches Deceitfulness of riches, and that can be natural things, spiritual things, whatever it might be. We can be deceived, friends. And the lust of other things enter into those who believed. We allow that to enter in. And what does it do? It chokes out the word. Christ, that spirit won't stay within us if we do not stay under this body and keep it under subjection, is what Paul said. Lest I have preached unto others, he said, I myself should be a castaway. This is what he was talking about. He had heard the word, but he says, I will stay under this body and bring it under subjection to the word. But this group didn't. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, look at the deceitful of riches, what it did to Judas Iscariot. And the lust of other things entering into our life and chokes out the word. That's what he says. <coughs> chokes out the word of God out of you and out of me. <coughs> And it becomes unfruitful, does not bring forth fruit. And these are they which are sown on good ground. The same sower, sowing the same seed. But there's some different ground that has been prepared. And that is our mind. First, we go back to the one there that we just, Satan just immediately came and took it out and we allowed that to happen. Our mind was off on something else at some ball game or what my boat or where I was going this week or off to the beach, whatever it might be, my mind was off on some of those things and Satan just immediately took it out and it brings no fruit. Then there's that other group there that they believed, they heard it and believed. <laughs> but they really didn't have any root in it. They really had no substance there. They were not strong in it. And Satan just comes and they let them, it goes away. He takes it away. And then those are there that on that rock or on the, where the thorns and the thistles, the things of this world, same seed, same sower, but in every situation there, the land was not prepared. And that land is you and me, our mind. We were not prepared to receive it and re 
prepared to keep Satan away. But then he says, but these are they which were sown on good ground, such as hear the word. They hear it and receive it and bring forth fruit. Some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. They received the word. And then you know what they did when they received it? They didn't stop there. They didn't say, now I have it. And I'll just sit back and wait. I believe, he says, I believe what he's saying there. They hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. They go to work in his kingdom. Whatever he asks for them to do. And he says that some brought forth 30 fold, some 60 fold, some 100 fold. He has different things for different people to do. But he had all of those that heard the word and it was on good ground. Every single one of them, he says, brought forth fruit. They worked in his kingdom and they brought it forth. And I believe that that is what we need to be seeking, knowledge of what we can do to bring forth fruit here for our Lord and Savior. Are you furnishing him good ground today, friends? That is the question. Are you furnishing the good ground? Or are we allowing the things that we just went over to keep the truth out of our mind, to keep us all in a condition so that we are not able to bring forth that good fruit? That spiritual fruit is what I'm talking about. We can bring forth all kind of natural fruit. We can accomplish whatever we set out to do, it looks like, naturally. Are we accomplishing the spiritual part as well as we are accomplishing the natural part? That is for every one of us to understand. That was the things that we were talking about last week. Is that inner man being renewed day by day? Is it getting stronger? That's what we have got to be looking into so that we can bring forth fruit and he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? Now he's talking now, I want you to understand, what he, he's talking about spiritual things there. But he's using that parable. He says, Do you bring forth a candle? You light it in those days and you bring it and you set it down on a table so that it gave light out. And he says, you didn't bring it in and put it under a basket or under the bed, but you set it on a candlestick and set it somewhere where it gives off light in our day. You wouldn't take a light and put it up under the bed if you wanted that room to be illuminated when you cut the switch on. You would want that light to be at the ceiling there is where in most cases or in a lamp over here or somewhere where when you flip the switch that it made a light and you could see everything in that room. You could see what was taking place there. That is what he's talking about spiritually. For there is nothing hid that shall not be manifest, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. And in our life, everything will be made manifest. But we want to see that when we receive that Spirit, and this is what the Lord wants to see out of us. If we receive the Spirit of God from Him, He wants us to let that light illuminate. He wants us to take that Spirit so that others may be able to see it and see the good works that God has worked in you and give God the glory and encourage them in the truth also. For there is nothing hid that shall not be made manifest and there is nothing in your life, not anything, not one single thing in your life that is being hid from God that will not be made manifest to him and to others if it's necessary. <laughs> Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. He started out there. If you've got ears to hear, 
Let him hear. That's what he said over there in that ninth verse. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. He's gone back and he's explained these things to us. And now he's saying, he that's got ears to hear spiritually, let him hear. And that's where we need to be today. Do you have those spiritual ears? Do you understand what is being preached and taught to us today? That's the question, friend. Do you understand it? And I hope that everybody here can say, yes, Lord, we understand these things. <laughs> then follow him. Do the things that he asked to be done in our day so that we can all stand with confidence with him. And he said unto him, them, take heed what you hear. And that's what I want us all to do today. Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. And that's the way our Lord worked. He says, take heed to what you hear. He says, with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. How much you receive of that spirit. How much you believe, he says, the Lord will give you more. He goes right on in and he explains that. He says, unto you that hear shall more be given. All of those that hear and accept it and wants to know more about it, he says, more will be given. In another place, he says, that he that lacks wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally. And that's what our Lord was talking about here. He says, unto him that here shall more be given. And don't we want to know more about the truth? Don't we want to know more about what we can do to help others in this same condition, in that lost condition, just as we have been, to help them to overcome. For he that hath, to him shall be given. And he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. Oh, think about that. He that hath, he that hath the Spirit of God, is what he's talking about. To him shall be given. To him shall be given more and more knowledge and understanding. Whatever he needs shall be given to him to be able to go through this life and to overcome Satan. It doesn't matter who you are or what. He that hath, he that hath the Spirit of God is what he's talking about. To him shall be given. Now, to him that hath not, and he's talking about to him that has not the Spirit of God, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. Which he hath. Now, what does he have? He doesn't have the Spirit of God, but he's got one thing. Those that has not the Spirit and has never repented and doesn't, there's one thing that they had. They had an opportunity to know Christ. But if they do not accept Him and they continue on, that opportunity will be taken away in death. And they will never have that again. He that hath shall to him shall be given eternal life. He that has the Spirit of God to him shall be given eternal life. He that hath not, that that he did have, that opportunity of eternal life will be taken from him to never have it again. That is a sad thing to think about. He that hath, keep it. Work with it so that you can be given that eternal life. And if you do not have that, it is there free for you today. All you have to do is take it to the Lord and ask. And he says, I'll give it to you. It is a free gift. And he said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise day, night, and day. And the seed spring up and grow. He knoweth not how. That king, that seed comes up. That's the power of God that created all those things. And man doesn't understand all about it. But he says if we sow that good seed, and he says, and it comes up, 
We go and we sleep day and night, whatever, and in a few days it comes up. For the earth bringeth forth the fruit of herself. First the blade, then the ear, then the full, full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately the, he putteth in the sickle because the harvest is come. And that is where the Lord will work with us, friends. He will sow that seed, that good seed. And we can receive that. And we can let it grow. Just as the earth brings forth that fruit, that spiritual part in us can bring forth that good fruit. First, a little bit of work. Then, he says, the ear begins to form and we can see spiritually that we are growing and forming. And he says, then after that, full ear in the corn. And when the Lord sees it, that we are fully mature spiritually, and we have done all that he asked for, just as that plant does all that it was planted for. It brings forth the ear and it matures and then it's ready to be used. Spiritually, we can be the same. And when that is done, he says, but when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he putteth in the sickle because the harvest has come. And there will be a time that the harvest will come in our life. And we will be taken off of this world because we have been able to bring forth that good fruit, if that's the case with us, and be with our Lord and Savior forever and ever. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. And he wants us to think about how that, he says that this is the kingdom of God, this is the spirit of God working within it. He says, now let's compare it. And he says, now you take that grain of mustard seed, which is sown in the earth, and it's the smallest seed that there is, and you can take it, and you can scatter it out there. He says, but when it is sown, it groweth up, and becometh greater than all herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge in the shadow of it. It grows. We've seen these things before. That little tiny seed. If you let it alone, it'll grow and grow into a big plant. And he says that's just exactly what the Spirit of God can do in you. That if you will just work with it and let that seed grow within you, furnish it that good ground, he says it will do all. It will grow and grow and become greater and greater in you that it might even Yet you'll be able then to help others as we go through life. And with many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. Many parables, he said, they spoke to him and he told them all about. He says, as they were able to hear. Are you able to hear today? Do you have those ears to hear? There was people in that day that were able to hear it and they accepted it. I hope and I beg that everyone here today has the ears to hear. And I hope that you are accepting his words. He says, but without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. And the same day, when the evening was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. He says, let us pass over. And to the other side of the, the sea there, they were sitting there in the sea, and he was teaching. And there was a, I believe that he was being encouraged by God to go to somewhere else that they might be able to teach there. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Think about this. Visualize this. A little ship, they were not big things that we see today. But whatever, it, and there were some bigger and smaller there. He says there was even some little ones there. But this little ship that was out there, there was a tremendous storm that had come up. And they were out in the sea. The ship taken on water. 
and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Our Lord, he was not concerned. He was there in some place away from the rest of them, asleep, resting. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? I believe they were extremely concerned of their well-being there. And they went to him, maybe in a manner of kind of chastising him, like, Master, do you not even care that we perish here on the sea? Wake up! Here you are asleep. That was their thoughts. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. This is one of, I guess, one of my favorite passages in the Bible, is this part here. One of the things that I can think about, that the Lord is available. He was available to these men. And he's available to all of us today. They had a great concern of their natural part that they were about to perish. They went to the Lord and cried out to him, Lord, do you not care that we perish? And what did he do but show the love and use the power that God had given to him to just walk up, rebuke the wind, and the wind became calm. And he just said, peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. Spiritually, every one of us has been in that place. If we have repented, we were one time in that same condition spiritually. We were concerned about our spiritual being. There was no peace there. There was turmoil. We saw we were going to perish. But we were able to go to him. And he was able to just say to us, Peace, be still. My peace I give unto you. And there can come a great calm over your life. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And if we've received that, we shouldn't be fearful about what Satan can do for us. And if we haven't received it, we ought to know in our mind today of what he can do. And don't be fearful. Don't, don't be unfaithful or, or not have any faith. But be full of faith. And accept him. And let him take that fear away. That that he says, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power. Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Don't be fearful of Satan. And be full of faith that what he has promised he can do for us. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I believe that they still, some of them still didn't totally and fully understand who the Lord was and the power and where it came from. And they had great respect. I believe that when they're talking about that fear there, I believe that meant they had great respect and they feared the reverence that was within him and the power that was within him. What manner of man is this? And I can tell you what manner of man it was. He was the Son of God. And he is alive today. He is there at the right hand of God the Father. And he is there to mediate between, for you and me to his Father. He is there to accept you. He is there to pray to his Father for you. That the Father might call you unto him and be able to give to you the Spirit of the Holy Ghost to all of those that ask and all of those that will do 
his will. All of those that furnish that good ground. Remember, the sower is the same. He's sowing the seed to everyone. It is up to you and me to furnish it a place for it to grow and to be strong. It's up to you and me to keep Satan out, to stay under this body and to use the power of God to keep it under subjection to the Spirit. The power of God can do that. Not your power, not me, but I can use that Spirit, the power of God, to keep this body under subjection to the law of grace. And you can too, if we will allow the Spirit to dwell within us. Friends, furnish that good ground. Take it to the Lord and let him show you. Don't let Satan deceive you. Don't let him sell you a counterfeit. But stand strong in the faith. And be reconciled to whatever he allows to come upon you. Knowing that he will never let anything come upon you but what there is a way to escape. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Beg him to give us all the understanding. Don't take the words because I said them, but take it because it's the work of the Lord. And let him justify it in you. Let him confirm the word in you. And then let's all work together in his kingdom here so that we can have that eternal life when we leave. As we sing today number 332, there may be someone that would like to unite with the church or might would like to make that commitment to our Lord and Savior, and you can do so by coming forward as we sing number 332. Thank you.
that great physician, he says, go on your way in peace to heaven and wear a crown with Jesus. We've got that opportunity to go on our way today. Let's use it, friends. Do the things that he asked to be done. And let's let that light shine in us and walk upright with our Lord and our Savior. Let us pray. To God the Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for what your Son has done by coming here to the earth to secure eternal life for all. All that asks and all that works in your kingdom. I know that it is a free gift, but I know that you have things for us to do to be able to work in your kingdom here upon the earth. So be with us. Give us knowledge and strength and understanding in the upcoming days that we are able to do with the things you have given to us that would be your will and what we should say and where we should go in your kingdom here upon the earth. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.